sunny spectacular sunday uh, i want to say happy father's day to all of the fathers out there protecting their children being a great father doing their thing so i want to give a shout out to the, all of the fathers in this world so let's dive into another video today i will be talking about who is in my top five best players of all time in the 2000s era and at number five, I got no other than Allen Iverson, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, pound for pound player in NBA history. You know, he was pretty much a bright gem in the 2000s. You know, he was a culture icon, you know, with the Rose, the Braves, as I mentioned before. Um, he was pretty much a pure bucket getter. He was dominant scoring the ball in the 2000s. Uh, I think he had a season, consecutive seasons, where he scored more than 30 more than 30 plus points more than 30 plus points per game in the 2000s and i think his best scoring season he had was 0506 i believe i think he averaged like 33 points per game so i announced him man with his with his iconic crossovers taking people ankles you know what i'm saying i mean dude dude was a was a highlight reel when it happened crossing over somebody and then getting the bucket on them and like i said he, you know he was he gave it his all every single night um for the uh for for the philadelphia fans i mean you know you carry that team to the finals in, in a 2001 playoff run and then you to actually beat the lakers at their home in the finals to give them their first loss uh in a 2001 playoff run in the finals man it, it, it that's not too many not too many people can say that and that's you know, I think he dropped 40 in that game, I believe. So, I can announce him, man. He was a big, the biggest icon to me in terms of culture standpoint, the impact, the influence, influential ways. And, you know, I can announce him, man. He, I mean, he, man, he was, he was, he just, he was just a pure, pure heart, pure bucket getter. Gave his all every single night. And then, you know, still to put up good numbers being traded to the Denver Nuggets playing with a young Carmelo Anthony. I think he averaged like 24, 24 plus points per game under Denver. Didn't have too many great playoff success. I think they kept getting out of the first round, but I can announce man was a pure icon. Dude was dominant in every single way. One of the best Steelers, on ball Steelers, defenders in the 2000s. Cause I think he averaged a career best in the 2000s, two points 2.2 .2 steals per game. So Alan Iverson, man, he, he 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 was everywhere on both ends, being the smallest man in the court. So he deserves to be number five on my list. And at number four, I got no other than the big ticket, the kid, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, man, first of two-way power forward, man, pretty much carried the uh, Minnesota franchise 2000s. Um, had a few deep playoff runs, but kept running to guys like the Tim Duncans, the Kobe Shacks, and the Dirk and Whiskeys. But you know, I mean, he was he, he was pretty much dominant uh, and carried his own weight, his own weight in his, uh, in the 2000s for the Timberwolves, and you know, a four-time rebounding champion in the 2000s. I mean, this dude, this dude was a true definition of a two-way versatile big that can guard one through five. Um, can shoot, uh, can shoot the mid range off the dribble, post fadeaway, the shimmies, you can name it all. So Kevin Garnett, man, was 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 spectacular with the Timberwolves. You know, winning MVP of the year, carrying them to, to their uh, conference finals. Uh, so Kevin Garnett was spectacular, man. And um, and then of course him being traded to Boston, he was still made a, a big defensive cultural impact. You know, along with guys like him, Kendrick Perkins, Tony Allen, and then like it was, it was just a pure veteran team that knew what to do, got the job done, beating Kobe in the finals in the 2008 finals. You know what I'm saying? And then he won Defensive Player of the Year, I believe, that year as well. So Kevin Garnett, man, he was he was 
man, he was, you can't not put him in your top five with best players in the 2000s. So, like I said, man, he was, he was, he was, he was on it. And then, you know, of course with him, uh, you know, I think he made more of a scoring sacrifice and more focus on just keying in on defense in Boston. When he got, when he got traded to Boston, it says a lot about him because also, of course, Ray Allen came along with him. So you already got your perennial scorers of Paul Pierce and Ray Allen. And, you know, Kevin Garnett was just being a vocal leader, uh, defensive anchor on the court. So Kevin Garnett, man, all around, man, he's pretty much the most versatile power forward you've ever seen in your life in terms of two-way. Like I said, uh, he got nice handles. I mean, he could do it all. So shout out to my boy Kevin Garnett to be number four on my list. And at number three, no other than the big fundamental, Tim Duncan. You know, basic as it can be, but, you know, back-to-back -back MVPs in 2000, 2002, and 2003. Uh, you know, I mean, pretty much after David Robinson retired, he's still putting up big numbers. And, you know, I think in the 2003 finals, I want to say he had a, an incredible, could have been an incredible stat line of a quadruple double against the Nets in the 2003 finals in game six. I think he had like 20 points, 10 blocks, 10 assists, and could have had 10 rebounds. Or I think he could have, they gave him eight blocks, but he could have had 10 blocks. But Tim Duncan in 2000 was just as dominant, you know, um, one of the best defensive bigs of all time. Um, you know, like I said, he it was just, you couldn't get him out of his game. He was quiet. He, he was going to kill you with one, two words. But um, Tim Duncan, man, he was he was that dog. And, you know, with that system of the Greg Popovich, you know what I'm saying, you, you, can't, you can't ask a better opportunity to play with other great international players like Ginobili, Tony Parker, and then you bring in a good guy like Steven Jackson, and then, you know, so forth. So, uh, Tim Duncan, you know, excelled under the Greg Popovich system, but I mean, he took the opportunity, took advantage, and led them the way. So, I mean, Tim Duncan, man, you know, like I said, two-time MVP. Uh, I want to say three-time champ in the 2000s. So, you know, Tim Duncan, bro, he was he was basically, like I said, a dominant big in, in the um, 2000s. And who I got number two? No other than Shaq the Diesel, the big man himself, most dominant big man of all time, had an incredible 2000 run, pretty much from 2000, 2006, 2007, but, you know, with, with his 3 P era of the Lakers and him and Kobe in the 2000s, was spectacular, dominant, and then, you know, went to Miami, uh, I think, he had his best season with Miami was 04 or 05. I think he finished second in MVP race uh, uh, behind Steve Nash, who won MVP in 2005. And I think Shaq was just in his mid-30s at that time. And he was still being top two in MVP. It, 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 it's incredible. I think he averaged like 24 points that season. So, you know, Shaq, man, Shaq was, like I said, a pretty dominant, entertaining guy. Uh, charismatic you know when it's time to lock in you can stop in the post left left block right block you can name it all so Shaq deserved to be number two on my list because like I said man he was pretty dominant and then he was still being dominant we got to the heat I think after the championship that's when he kind of declined a little bit here and there but he still made a few all-star appearances he still made a few playoff runs uh, with the Phoenix Suns so He's deserving to be number two on my list. And no other than last, the number one on my list, we all know who this is. Kobe Bean Bryant took over 2000 with his scoring, best scoring year. Outside of 2005, 2006 season was 2002, the 2003 season where he had a consecutive, consecutive, consecutive 40, 40 points plus games in the uh, 2003, I mean 2002, 2003 season. And man, Kobe was man, Kobe was spectacular in the 2000s, bro. And you can you couldn't act for much. So that's my top five on my list of the best players in the 2000s. If you like this video, like, 
comment, share, and subscribe. I love you guys. Jay Boogie is out.